is running up my dear. I need, I need, hello. I need, I need, hello. I need, I need, hello. thank God for this morning, and we are happy to be in his presence. Shall we pray? You say, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, for my burden is easy, and my yoke is light. Dear God in heaven, May that today be our experience. May that be our reality. Save someone this morning. Save all of us. When we leave this place, let us leave without a doubt that we have been revived. <laughs> this is our prayer in Jesus' name. This is also the 12th time I will be standing on this pulpit. And uh, being the 12th time, just want to reflect with us a little longer around the story of Calvary. In Luke 23 and verse 32, Luke 23, verse 32, and there were also two other criminals led with him to be put to death. And when they came to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. And the criminals, one on the right and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, 
for they do not know what they do. And the Bible says, and they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the people stood beholding, verse 35. And the rulers also with them derided, saying, he saved others, let him save himself. If he be Christ, the chosen of God. 36. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save yourself. And a superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. And one of the criminals which will were hanged, railed on him, saying, If thou be the Christ, save thyself and us. But the other, answering, rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee today, Thou shalt be with me in paradise. Shall we pray again? Lord, Remember me when you come in your kingdom. Grant us power through and in the name of Jesus. Now we may look at Jesus again and say, Lord, remember me in Jesus' name. Amen. Our subject is remember me. Remember me. According to the book, Desire of Ages, this man who now has been called the other thief had not been a hardened criminal. He had been laid astray by, by evil associations and by bad company. This bad company had destroyed his morals over time. He had found himself in bad, toxic relationships, which had weakened his influence and character over time. He had found himself beholding things that changed him over time. And these bad relationships had caused him injury and pain. We are also told that somewhere he had heard and he had seen Jesus while he was teaching. Moving from place to place, he had heard of the gospel of a second chance. But every time the word of God came to his heart and he would be saved, his conviction was weakened because of the hypocrisy of the priests, the scribes, the Sadducees. Eventually, he obited the path which all those who reject the voice of Jesus must obit. He found himself going deeper and deeper into sin. He found that the downward spiral and trajectory into sin overwhelmed him. And not long, he was arrested, tried, and put on death row. And now he was hopeless in despair and despondent. The law he had broken for so long finally had broken him. 
And now we find him in the judgment hall of Pilate. This is where we meet him as we scan the judgment hall. We see one of the offenders. He is calm and quiet like a man on death row, knowing that what he is receiving is the just recompense of reward. The other thief. He had heard Pilate pronouncing himself in judgment in John chapter 19 verse 4, looking at Jesus and saying, I find no fault in this man. He was puzzled by that concept of justice. Because Pilate, having found no fault in this man, proceeded to say, nonetheless, I will chastise him. You know, by the time Pilate was coming to this particular hearing, his wife had sent a message out to him in Matthew 27. His wife had said, have nothing to do with that man, for I have suffered many things on account of him. Have nothing against Jesus. And so by the time Pilate was coming to the judgment hall, he was coming with the burden and the weight of evidence. As he looked at the face of Jesus, as many of us modern day pilots are put in the place of judgment, let us judge wisely. Let us judge for and not against evidence. Mark represents the tragedy that the other thief was seeing in the judgment hall. In Mark chapter 15, In Mark chapter 15, verse 15, the Bible says, And so Pilate, willing to content the people, Pilate determined to please the people, Pilate determined to earn political points on an evening such as this, Pilate determined to earn political points on a morning such as this, the Bible says, and so Pilate willing to content the people. Like many modern day Pilates rejecting Jesus that they may please the crowd. Because the boys love you, you don't want to love Jesus. Because the girls love you and the girls don't love Jesus, you turn your back on Jesus. Because the culture of this world is against the kingdom of light, you turn your back on Jesus. Because you want to please the multitude. Because you want to score points with the crowd that is going headlong toward destruction. Because you want to please the people. No people pleaser will enter into the kingdom of God. Only those who will do the will of his father. Those who look to the left and to the right and those who wait to be for preeminence, for plaudits, for positions or for popularity. Those who want to be primed up, to be, those who want to be, to be pampered, will not see the kingdom of heaven. Only those who will do the will of his father. Pilate fell on this point because Pilate was a, was a politician and so he made a political choice. But the tragedy of political choices is that soon afterward Pilate took his own life. The tragedy of a life lived in trying to please the people is that soon after, Pilate took his own life. Having said, I find no fault in this man, washing his hand, trying to wash his conscience. He never could remove the stain from his mind. That a preacher spoke for 15 sermons, a preacher spoke for a whole week, and you listened, and you were willing to please your people. That you refuse to accept Jesus because it was not convenient or politically correct or socially correct. You will not wash that stain by washing your hands. It will remain in your conscience unless and until you receive Jesus. But the text moves. And so the preacher moves. Story says that after Pilate's tragic judgment, the other thief, together with the Prince of Peace and the other criminal, the three of them, were tossed out of the gates of the city. 
And as they were moving toward Golgotha, the thief could hear the, the taunts and the jeers. But he could also hear the words of women wailing and weeping after Jesus. Mothers crying for their children, crying for generations to come. And he could hear the voice of Jesus saying, weep not for me, child. Don't cry for me now. Because as for me and my family, I have made the choice. As for me and, my, and the kingdom, we are right with the Lord. Weep not for me, but weep for yourselves. If they do this in a green tree, what shall they do in a dry one? Weep for yourselves. The other thief had these words. And his mind was tossing. He, he, could, he was reflecting and saying, what manner of man is this? That when people show empathy, when people are crying out for you, you still have time to look at them pitifully and tenderly and tell them that your souls are in danger. He had this, the other thief. He looked and he saw the disciples, as the Bible said, they had all forsaken Jesus and fled. He could see them walking, not, not too close, walking somewhere in the periphery, not willing to be seen at this hour. Because they did not want to associate with a savior who was about to die. The other thief saw Peter, he saw all this entire company of disciples. All those who had, who had covenanted to be with Jesus till the very end of time. He could see them orbiting the periphery, looking for the, the, the last of the spaces in the balcony. Looking for the last possible seat to sit. Looking for the place where they would be farthest from the moving of the water. He saw them. And as he bore his own cross, he looked at Jesus and he said, could it be? Could it be? And then, of course, he saw the antics of a man called Simon of Sirin. A man who quickly was compelled and bore the cross cheerfully. And the other thief said, though millions are going in, there still appears to be room at the cross for me. Though he's gone in, there still appears to be room. For if Simon the Serene can find space, perhaps there could still be space. He looked at the wonderful change in the eyes of the Cyrene. As he began in compulsion, he saw him proceeding, saying, It is Jesus and I. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back. He looked at his face, a face that began in a frown that now was in a smile cheerfully following Jesus. On the way to Calvary, he saw the mother of Jesus, weeping in tears and agony and looking at the Savior and saying, let there be nothing between my soul and the Savior. Nothing of this world's delirious dreams and everything else. Nothing between me and the Savior. He said, could it be that there is still space and chance? Could it be? And as this murderous procession proceeded on toward Calvary, the other thief continued to ask in his mind, could this be the day? The procession reached Calvary. And in Calvary, they quickly brought hammers and nails. And the spikes were driven into the hands of Jesus. The disciples now had lost all confidence and hope, and they began walking away saying, we thought he is the one that should have redeemed Israel. Downcast and forsaken. And then the cross was lifted up. And then the cross was thrust into the ground. And those words that Pilate had written, those words from the judgment hall of Pilate were written, Jesus, the King of the Jews. And Pilate wrote these words in Hebrew, the language of religion. He wrote these words in Greek, the language of instruction and learning. He wrote these words in Latin, the, la the language of government and politics. Attracting the attention of the old world that Jesus is a king of everything around our life. 
Jesus is the king of religion. Jesus is the king of government and politics. Jesus is the king of, of instruction and learning. That there is no religion that will avail of any good if it is not founded on the author and finisher of all faith. That if you are worshipping what you know not, then you need to turn your eyes and begin to worship Jesus, who is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Pilate wrote Jesus, the King of the Jews in Hebrew, to remind us constantly that our religion must be anchored and focused on Jesus. That Christ and his cross is the fulcrum of the ages. He is the center. Hymn writer says, angels sing around thee the center of unbroken praise. Jesus is at center. Whatever religion you have furnished for yourself, whether it is the religion or the God of money, whether it is the God of prostitution, whether it is the God of the Amorites on whose land you dwell, but today make the choice to found your faith on the religion of Jesus. On the gospel of a second chance, on Christ Jesus, the mighty Prince Emmanuel, God with us. He came to his own and his own received him not. You know, there are people listening to me tonight, this day, whose religion and God is money. There are people listening to me today whose God is ambition and appetite. Jesus must be the king in the religious sphere as he is the king in class. Is God, is Jesus the king in your academics? When you sit down to write your exams, do you write them with the power and under the influence of Jesus? Is Jesus the king in your, in, in, in your academics, in your instruction, in your learning, in your class? Is Jesus the king? And finally, in your leadership, in your government, in your rule, in your reign, in your politics, is Jesus king? When the other thief saw this inscription, Jesus king of the Jews, something moved in his heart. He began asking himself, could it be true that there is something in my life that is not given to this man? Could it be true? Is he the king of my religion? Is he the king of my, of my learning? Is he the king of my government? And all those who walked around this place saw that particular sign, Jesus, the king of the Jews. A little while later, Jesus uttered those words from the cross, Father, forgive them. Father, Forgive them, for they do not know what they do. He had these words. Father, forgive them. Jesting and laughing in church as though it is a joke. Father, forgive them. Moving around spiritual things as though it is normal and it is a joke. Father, forgive them. Considering the things of eternity of far less value than the things of this world. Father, forgive them. Exchanging the cross for the joys of this present world without looking at the future. Father, forgive them. Spending all their lives in bondage and in sin. Spending all their life in cohabiting, in prostitution, in immorality, in sexual deviancy. Father, forgive them. Spending their life and their substance in cheating. Cheating in class, cheating in life, cheating in marriage, cheating in every sphere. Father, forgive them. Cheating in everything they could cheat on. Father, forgive them. Turning their back on their only hope of glory. And moving as though everything is okay. Wearing a mask. Writer has written a book called Peeling Back the Mask. It is God's intention to remove the mask. And he says, Father, forgive them, for I can see in their heart they move around Baraton looking holy and pure, but in their hearts there is sin and wickedness. They move around in garments of righteousness, but inside their hearts are dead men's bones. Father, forgive them. 
They make a pretension and they, they come like pretentious foliage, but they never yield any fruit. Father, forgive them. They move around with an accent, looking like they understand everything. They are too clever for eternity. But Jesus, but Father, I know in their hearts there is a hunger, there is a thirst after righteousness. Father, forgive them. They are too clever. They know much more than they are being told. Every time the message comes, they say, that one we know, tell us another. Every time the word comes, they say, this is a very good message for my neighbor. Deflecting, shifting responsibility. Father, forgive them. Because they do not know what they are doing. That is why they sleep on different beds every day. For if they knew their beds, they would sleep on it. They do not know what they are doing. Father, forgive them. That is why they break hearts left, right, center, because they do not know what they are doing. Father, forgive them. And as the other thief listened to this word, he said, could it be, could it be that my life has been lived in rebellion? Could it be that this is really the Messiah? As these words continue, as his experience continued at the cross, you know, the devil is tricky. The devil will come just when you're about to make a choice and he comes to harden your heart. In Matthew chapter 27, as conviction, wave after wave of conviction is coming to the heart of this man called the other thief. As wave after wave of evidence is coming. In Matthew 27 verse 44, it says, the thieves also, who were crucified with him, cast the same in the tea. They joined this murderous chorus. You know, for a moment, the other thief was about to make a choice. But when he had the taunts, when he had the cheers, when he had the jeers, he joined his companion for a time and he also cast Jesus. Attempting, attempting to stifle his conscience. Refusing to listen to the voice of God. In fact, when he left the meeting, he went back and dressed a far worse way than she had dressed before because she's trying to stifle conscience. When he left the meeting, he went back and said, now I will watch it by force. Let's see what will happen. Attempting to stifle the conscience. He left the meeting with the knowledge of the power of God and he went back and said, let us see what will happen. He joined the chorus and he began to curse Jesus. But our God, is, our God is merciful. Our God is gracious. Our God is full of compassions. Morning by morning, new mercies we see. As he has been, he forever shall be great, is our God's faithfulness. Because as this jeering and cheering went on, this man continued to battle conviction. Moving on one side, saying, you know, today I, will, today I will go. Today I will make the decision for Jesus. And then just on the verge of it, something flashes in his mind, and he turns his course, and he begins to cast the same Jesus. But our God will not leave us in that condition. Our God will yet speak to us, and our God will continue to warn us. Our God will continue to invite us. And he heard this voice from the foot of the cross. He saved others. Let him save himself. And with that word, the other thief again was awakened. If this man can save others, if this man could save the prostitute, if this man could rescue the Magdalene, he can save me. Even though it appears late, if it is true he saved others, this man can save me. Though I can see millions have gone, there is still room at the cross for me. When he heard that word, he saved others, he can save me. The thief remembered that through, even though his grace has sustained many across the years, his grace still is not limited. His power is still available even for the person who will make a decision at the very last moment. You know, he kept asking himself, can I now give my life now? And you know, the Lord reminded him, in his mind, the word came forth, what have you to lose now? 
If you don't accept Jesus, your fate is sealed. If you accept Jesus, there is hope for your soul. If you don't accept Jesus now that you are being abused, if you don't accept Jesus now that you are being violated, what, what hope is there for you? But if you accept him, there is hope for, you, for your soul. Now that the chips are down, the only reasonable thing for you to do is to accept Jesus. He saved others. Let him save himself too. And then the other thief began railing, making noise, and abusing Jesus. And saying, if you are the son of God, he says in the book of Luke chapter 23, Verse 39, if thou be Christ, save thyself and us. Verse 40, but the other answering rebuked him. Do you not fear God? Why do you behave as though there is no Jesus? Why do you run around in sex, in fornication, in all these things as though there is no Jesus and judgment? Do you not fear God? Why do you scheme and plan against God's children by night and come and present yourself as holy by day? Do you not fear Jesus? Why is the word going forth every day and you sit there looking at the preacher and saying, that is not for me today? Do you not fear Jesus? For he is innocent, but we are suffering the just recompense of our lives. Jesus is innocent. But we are suffering the just recompense of our reward. And then he says this. And he said unto Jesus in verse 42, God, remember me. God, remember my family. God, remember my pain and my tears. God, remember my circumstance. Jesus, remember my appetite. Jesus, remember my struggles, my hopes, my joys. Remember me. He turned to Jesus at the 11th hour and he said, Lord, remember me. Remember me. And today, I just want to remind us that there is still time and chance for us to stretch out our hands to Jesus and tell him, God, remember my marriage. We are struggling. I am in pain. But you can remember me now. Remember my children, wayward and out of order, but you can remember them today. Remember me. Remember my academics, my classes, nothing is going into my mind. My mind is foggy, hazy, and dark. But Jesus, remember me. And the Bible says, and when Jesus heard this word, at a time when everything else was either jeers or taunts, when the whole world was saying, was mocking him on the cross, when he had one word from a man saying, remember me, Jesus looked at him. And their eyes were locked together as the other thief looked at the same eyes that the, the, the Simon the Cyrene had seen. The same eye that Peter had seen. The same eye that had rescued the Magdalene. The same eye of Jesus. You can look into it today. You can stretch your eye and look into the eyes of Jesus today and you can see the hope he's holding out for your life. You can see that despite the things that have happened in your life, despite that very tragic family condition, despite your struggles with sexual identity, despite your struggles in academia, despite your struggles in politics, despite your struggles in leadership, you can look into the eyes of Jesus and you can tell him, Lord, remember me tonight, today. And God hearing that word says, the Bible says, Jesus suspended death. He posed death. He said, yes, I will go ahead and die. But now first, I must respond to a crisis. He said, yes, for this reason came I into the world. And everything is at stake. Prophecy is at stake. Eternity at stake. But he says, for a moment, I have to respond to that cry for mercy. He says, verily, speaking today, you will be with me in paradise. As we come to the end of this 
meetings. I'd like to commend to you the bravery and the urgency of the other thief. Look at your life. Consider the circumstances. You know where you are now. Things are already down. You are already out of access. The chips are already down. From here, it can only get worse and worse and worse. When you walk to the doctor's table and he says, I am, I'm afraid this is terminal, it can only get worse. Death row. All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, who is our Lord. If you continue in pornography and masturbation, it can only get worse. But if you turn and say, Lord, remember me, your life will never be the same again. If you continue in breaking people's homes and families, if you continue looking for sponsors, it can only get worse. But if you look into the face of Jesus, it will never be the same again. If you continue with that appetite or that aggression in your loins, it can only get worse. But if you look into the eyes of Jesus, he will remember you today. He says, all those who come to me, I will in no wise cast out. Today I want to make a special appeal. On the 11th hour, is there someone tonight, today who is saying, God, I have Strayed, I have done my own things. But like the dying thief, you rejoice to see the fountain in your day. And you say, and there may I, though vile as he, be washed to sin no more. Are you here today? And you're saying, God, remember me. I have sat on conviction. I have rejected your word. I have lived my own life. But Lord, remember me today. Is there someone sitting here today who wants to make the choice for Jesus? Come. Come. Saying, God, remember me. Lord, remember me. As we look at the fountain filled with blood that is drawn from Emmanuel's streams, and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains. The dying thief rejoiced to see the fountain in his day. And there may I, though vile as he, be washed to sin no more. Thou precious lamb, thy, thy, thou dying lamb, your precious blood will never lose its power until all the ransomed church of God are saved to sin no more. Is there somebody who's saying today, Jesus, remember me? And you want to make a commitment with Jesus, come. Someone who's saying today, remember me. Thou precious lamb, your blood will never lose its power. Someone who's saying, God, where, where I have reached, the chips are down. Everything is off. Only Jesus can come in. Filled with blood. Drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sinners plunged beneath that flood. Come. If it is your commitment to plunge beneath that flood. All your guilty stains will be lost to the power of Jesus. All the guilt, all the shame, all the fear will be gone. He will look at you on the cross and say, I promise you today on the 12th message. I promise you today on Friday. I promise you on this very day of our Lord that when at the renewal of all things, you will be with me in the kingdom. Come, make the decision for Jesus. Is there somebody else who is saying, God, remember me. We are bound by the tyranny of the clock. But if you want to make the choice for Jesus, come. Your precious blood is to see that fountain in his day. And we at Baraton today can rejoice to see that fountain. You can come and receive the power of Jesus. 
You can tear out of the crowd. You can move out of the crowd and say, Jesus, he can wash our sins away. Is there somebody else? Is there somebody else who's making that commitment? Is there somebody else who's saying, Jesus, I want to wash my sins away. Okay, as we stand, let's all stand and arise. There were only two thieves. They were both thieves. One chose to deny the Lord the length of our and died a sin and a thief. You may choose to die. We want you to come and today receive Christ as a personal Savior. Come out of the crowd. Walk from there. I'm seeing you coming. You just come. Don't wait for it any longer. There were only two. And there are only two people here. By the way, all of us have sinned. Whether you refuse to come is that you are choosing that you want to live in sin. It will get you. Believe you me. Because all of us are sinners. So you want to keep it? You want to walk on it? You want to sit on it? You want to join the crowd? You are doing it at your own peril. But you can come. Though a thief, though a sinner, and seek Christ and get grace and get eternity at your disposal. That is what we are telling you. Please come. I'm about to pray. You don't need to sit in the crowd. But the choice is yours. We will never push you from the crowd to bring you here. But we plead with you. You are making a wrong choice. Soften yourself. And come. Please. We are letting you know. You need to come. Thank you sister. Even though you are limping. The Lord knows it. People are coming, those who are limping, and those who have two feet and not limping are just standing, even though they are thieves and sinners. That will be judgment for you. Just stay there, my sister. God has seen you where you are. The last one. I want to pray now. You have seen it. You know you are a sinner. You may be a faculty, you may be a staff. All staff don't sin. So, who are you pretending? I'm saying we want you to see God and get eternity at your disposal. Come, we pray as we end this service. I'm waiting for you to come. They are the one, two, those two only. But if somebody will come with them, I will thank God for you. You can come from back there. You know, I found out that there are people who come at the back because they want to play with their games and do other things in the church. You are setting yourself up for destruction. We don't want to be destroyed. You can still walk out from there and come here. Yeah, don't think you are above coming to God because you are up in the balcony. God is still calling you there in the balcony. You can walk down through that door and come here. Now I'm praying. And even as we pray, don't remain behind. Today, we are lingering longer here because we don't want you to remain behind. Thank you for coming. I'm cutting those on up there at the corner. And the, the worst one sit at the very edge. <laughs> but we still give that opportunity to come. Yes, thank you for doing that one. I've seen that hand. It can come down and be here. Join me before God. Now let's pray. Now you are walking. You are the one who is stopping me. Just come. Come faster. I was just about to give this lady the chair to sit. I was just about to sit to pray, but you said we cannot lose that gentleman coming in. Even as I pray now, you can walk and come. Let's pray. Loving Father, it is clear. Even at the last minute, when they had put a cross on you, when they have jeered you all the way, your tenderness and mercy still lingered. And when a thief asked to be remembered, you spoke that day. Today, your fate is sealed. You will be with me in paradise. 
Lord, I want to thank you for our friends who have walked out of the crowd. Bringing themselves before you in the altar. Forgive them, Father. Wash them. Bless them. Transform them from inside outside. Let them be channels of light and not of darkness. And may their life be never be the same again with you as they walk. But I still pray for this church. There are those who are sinners who want to sit and remain with their sin, which will destroy them. But I pray for your grace. I pray, yes, that Lord, you will talk to all of us that will not choose to die when this life eternal. I pray for this institution, Father, built on the foundation of those who would want to lead people not only to academia excellence, but also to be with you for eternity. Now, may your spirit over on this institution, and may your love be seen, and may your grace be felt. We don't want to see the life of anybody. But if that's their choice, we pray one more time, forgive them. May everything be done. And our sister, who has been injured outwardly and perhaps inwardly, I pray for special healing of the body, of the mind, and of the spirit. Take her and mold her. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.